Welcome back to Switch Stars, my name is Luke and today on the channel we're going to be taking a look at an indie horror title which goes by the name Remorse The List and this one has been out for a while on Steam but has just made the jump to the Switch and is advertised as a classic survival horror game in which exploration is the key to understanding what is happening. Now you know I love my horror games and I was intrigued to give this one a go as the Switch is somewhat lacking when it comes to decent horror games but could this one break the mould? Well hit that like button, subscribe for more Switch reviews and content and let's find out. So the storyline in Remorse the List is all a little bit obscure and with other titles at this point I'd usually say that I don't want to spoil anything as the whole point of the game is to try and understand what the hell is going on. Sadly I can't even say that with this one though as much of the narrative is delivered via audio tapes laid about the place but these are all currently bugged and simply wouldn't activate for me so all I got was fragmented notes here and there leaving me very little information to go by and thus none the wiser as to what the actual plot of the game was come the end of it. So no great start for this one in terms of story and I'm not going to divulge what little information I did gather but let's just move on and talk about the gameplay. Now after a short introductory section you awaken on the floor of a storage facility in a small Hungarian town which I'm not even going to try and pronounce the name of but upon arrival you receive a strange list which essentially directs you to retrieve a specific set of items and this singular objective is the focus of the game. Much like the Resident Evil and Silent Hill games though, Remorse is your typical survival horror formula which mixes exploration and puzzle solving with combat and I say it definitely manages to capture the feel of these classics especially with its horror elements. There are a few choice jump scares here and there but most of the tension comes from its atmospheric environments, disturbing visual aesthetics and its monsters which are all fantastically gruesome abominations that have incredibly creepy movement patterns and horrible screeches which really put you on edge and alert you to the presence. Throughout your time playing though you'll be travelling across town to three distinct locations each of which contain the items that you require as well as some puzzles and nasties to fight and while they're not particularly original they do have that twisted silent hill like feel to them with dark otherworldly areas mixed amongst reality and they were enjoyable enough to explore but most of the areas were generally pretty small and there's usually some puzzle solving involved with actually getting into these places so I'd say that the majority of your player time is actually spent outside of them. Each of them is also designed to deliver the story elements with you making decisions at the end of them and the game supposedly has multiple endings but like I said this part is currently broken so making sense of any of it is an impossibility. Now when it comes to the puzzles they're all pretty logical and usually solved by using visual hints in the environments, deciphering documents or by retrieving specific items and for the most part they're pretty enjoyable and they're not overly cryptic so it won't take you a million years to actually solve them. However I do have to criticise the fact that you can actually access documents whilst interacting with puzzles and they reset whenever you come out of them and one particular puzzle had me completely stumped. That was until I looked up a YouTube video and discovered that the shadow designed to give you a hint doesn't actually show up in the Switch version. All in all though, the game strikes a decent balance between its puzzles and combat elements and to be honest I've actually kind of summarised everything there is to know about this one. It's as you'd expect, a survival horror game which doesn't do a whole lot to break the mould of its forefathers and this is perfectly fine. Overall the gameplay experience offered by Remorse isn't too bad and being an indie game I'd expect to deal with a certain amount of jank. However that being said, the Switch version of the game in general has a lot of issues which just make it way more frustrating than it is enjoyable. Now like I said there's some great atmosphere to this one and some very Silent Hill-esque moments where you're transported to twisted versions of the world which are all pretty disturbing and add some nice variety. However a couple of these feature some unnecessary and frustrating jumping puzzles and others which are looking to deliver story elements are interrupted by enemies which I kind of felt took away from the atmosphere and delivery of the moment and ruined them a little for me. 
As expected, there's a whole lot of back and forth throughout the game, having you go to location A to find it blocked, head to location B to retrieve an item, and then head back to location A to open the way forward. And I usually don't mind this too much as it's part and parcel of the genre. However, the town in which you find yourself is pretty large and unlike the tight-knit corridors of something like the Resident Evil Mansion with its multiple shortcuts which make traversing areas less of a burden, there are very few shortcuts in remorse, so trekking back and forth across the town becomes extremely tedious, especially when for the most part there's no other reason to do so other than to retrieve said item. To make matters worse, the game's inventory system is also incredibly stingy, and while you do find a couple of pouches which add a couple of additional slots, more often than not I was forced to just drop ammo to pick up key items, and due to the open nature of the game which allows you to complete each list objective in almost any order, I frequently had key items just sat there doing nothing and had to go out of my way to find a use for them to free up the slot that they were occupying. And it's also worth knowing that there are no storage containers in the game, so you're forced to drop items on the ground and then try and remember where you place them, which includes any additional weapons that you acquire. Now when it comes to the controls, these are pretty much your standard first person shooter setup and are generally not too bad, and I like the fact that you were able to equip both a primary and a secondary weapon and then quickly switch between them, however the sensitivity is just way too high in this one which makes aiming to take down enemies even more of a pain than it already is, and we'll get onto these in a moment, but the real control issues lie in its cumbersome inventory system. You open it with the plus button, but close it with the A button. It has you pressing the L button to move items around, which are then used with the B button, but this only actually applies to key items. And in order to use things like medkits, you must first move them to your secondary slot before exiting the inventory, switching to them and then activating them, and then you have to go back into the inventory to re-equip your secondary weapon. Is a complete pain in the ass and makes no sense at all. So finally let's talk about the enemies. Now like I said I really like the enemy designs and I thought the presence of them brought some really good horror elements to the game, but unfortunately that's where the compliments end. The AI of them is poorly designed, with them often attacking you before they even see you, and them having very little in the way of pathing, which means they often get stuck on objects or in the environment, which makes them very easy to exploit. They also turn out to be incredible bullet sponges, often taking more than a single clip to kill. That is of course if you can even aim at them to start with, but the reload animations of the weapons are also slow and you'll usually just end up backpedalling away from them, exploiting their idiocy, or alternatively just running past them and ignoring them entirely, so any horror that they bring turns out to be short lived and to me it felt like many of them were just placed to break the tedium when running from point A to point B. It's also worth noting that there is melee combat in the game, which is practically useless, but while health packs are scarce, ammunition is plentiful, and there's also tons of save points, so resource management just really isn't an issue with this one. To finish on a positive note though with enemies, the one boss fight that I encountered had some well put together mechanics, and it gave you the option of either taking down the boss directly or solving a puzzle to take it down, and I thought this made a nice change from the usual shoot it until it dies formula. All in all though, my experience with Remorse the List wasn't a bad one, but it wasn't particularly good either, and the core gameplay principles are as solid as the survival horror genre itself, but it's really let down by some questionable design choices, namely with the inventory system and the enemies, and just with this switch port in general, and it seems to me like they just didn't really bother to actually playtest the game at all before releasing it. With the story being completely lost due to the buggy cassette tapes, it just doesn't really have anything to set it aside from any other generic survival horror game. But even worse, as it currently stands, I couldn't actually finish the game, as I got to another jumping puzzle about 5 minutes from the end of it, and every time I tried to make this jump, the frame rate dropped to less than 1 frame per second, and no amount of restarts fixed this issue. 
So for that reason, I'm not going to actually be rating the game in this review. And hopefully these issues get patched in the near future because so far as survival horror experiences go on the Switch, Remorse the List is actually pretty decent. But in its current state, if I were you, I'd definitely wait out on a patch on this one before making a purchase. Now when it comes to the visuals and audio, I've already mentioned that the game has some great atmosphere and the enemies are creepy as hell, but so far as the overall quality of the visuals go, they're actually really good for a Switch port. The texture quality is decent, so the environments have some nice detail into them, there's some good use of lighting by the missing shadows that I mentioned, and aside from that game breaker, for the most part the performance holds up well on the Switch. Audio wise, again, pretty decent. The weapons all sound good, we get some nice horrifying screeches from the enemies to put the shits up here, and the music is not bad either. It's a little bit generic but adds some nice ambience and gets the job done nicely. All in all, reasonable stuff on the audio and visual front. So in conclusion then, as it stands, unfortunately I can't really recommend picking up the Switch port of Remorse the List, as I just don't feel like it does it justice in my opinion and you're not really getting the full experience due to the bugs. Sure, the enemies are bullet sponges and the limited inventory system is still going to be a bit of a nightmare, but the game itself has some of that old school jank to it which fans of classic survival horror games will no doubt appreciate, and all in all it could have been pretty decent all things considered. But it's the bugs which completely taint the experience with this one, removing any hopes of understanding its storyline or even finishing the game. And so, like I said, no official rating being given today, but if they address the issues that I've raised, it could definitely be a solid 3 out of 5 stars from me with this one. With that said though, have you played Remorse the List yet, either on Switch or PC, and how did you find the game? I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments section below. And as always, if this review helped you out, show your appreciation by dropping a like, consider subscribing to the channel for more Switch reviews and content, but until next time, take care of yourselves and game on.